so we've been installing a lot of ai related tools in our local machine and uh, we have uh, up and running olama we have up and running uh, open web ui and that is why we can take a look at uh, so something like this right so like if we choose a model let's say let's choose a 5.3 model it's a very small uh, if you see 4 billion parameter model and only 2 gigs in size so if we take this and if we take a look at our two GPUs two NVIDIA P40s with uh, 48 gigs of total VRAM and if we just ask something let's ask about a fun fact about Roman Empire right and it's well it's, it's actually not loaded in our in our uh, GPU and it is still working that fast right so let's do one thing let's uh, restart our Olama server so a docker restart Olama and let's try to do this thing again and see if it gets loaded in our Olama. Yep, it is. It is. So for some reason, uh, I've noticed that that sometimes when uh, doc, uh, Olama is running in Docker, it, it doesn't use the GPUs. So I have to restart my Docker uh, Olama image to get that running. I'm glad that I caught this on video right now so you guys could see it too. So the easy fix is just do a Docker restart Olama and it fixes it. And I'll have to check and debug why it doesn't uh, load in the in the gpu's memory sometimes the whole llm anyway so the point i'm trying to make is that we have our olama server up we have our open web ui up and we can do a little bit of chat gpt like interface over here there are some features and tools available that gives it a little bit of rag and uh, we are okay with this but we want to go beyond this we want to make sure we are using the full potential of Olama installed on our local machine. So a few things that we can do is we can, you know, make use of an IDE, write some code and we can we can execute some code, right? So let's say um, over here, I'm uh, importing open AI, right? So if you see it is an open AI and I'm using the open AI's client over here, but I'm passing the base URL as Olama's base url right and api key is mandatory you can pass anything over here uh, because it's a local uh, url and even though this is running in docker the port 11434 is exposed to the host machine so you can use a local host 11434 over here right so um if you run this particular command right um and and i, I was just messing with this so um where was it played no let's just ask it a question like that so there is a role system uh, and you are a helpful assistant uh, user who won the world series and assistant says uh, la dodgers won in 2020 right and where was it played so now let's run this so python um and this is called main.py and we will have an output back because the model is already loaded. It gave us an output back, right? And, and that's fine, right? So we can now write a Python program to execute some code and interact with our um, Olama server with OpenAI uh, libraries, right? So the reason why this is important is that many agent frameworks like we'll be using Autogen uh, in near future and many agent frameworks uh, work with OpenAI seamlessly. So you do not need to put any kind of wrapper around your Olama. Olama natively can give you this particular um, APIs, right? So as long as you expose your base URL like this and put anything in the API key, you're golden over there. You can, you can specify then which model you wanna use and, uh, and, and you can continue. And, and we'll see all this in future. But what I want to show you over here is if you are using an agent on your local machine, then you are giving it 
too much power to do changes and to run code on this machine which is what we don't want we do not want these agents to have unlimited power to even destroy your your local machine because they'll have shell access and they'll have python access and they can do whatever they want to do um, now for me this machine is a virtual machine so they do not have access to this machine um, apart i mean they, they only have access to this virtual machine, right? So maybe it's okay for me to give them access. However, I still do not want them access to my virtual machine. So what do I want to do over here? There is a way to run your Python code uh, dockerized, right? So uh, this is something that I want to show you that how can we uh, run our uh, Python code in in a dev container is what it is called. So I'm going to close this PyCharm because dev containers for PyCharm are only supported in the professional edition or, or the paid version of PyCharm. So I'm, going to, I'm just going to close this for now. I'm going to save this and close it. Uh, and let's open our favorite uh, editor VS Code in a second and, and we'll do all that over there. But what is a dev container, right? So a dev container is essentially um, like a Docker container, which is uh, running all the Python related uh, code that you have. So we'll install the Python version over there and we'll install any other requirements that we have. So any other libraries or whatever dependencies that we have will install and we'll try to find an easy, seamless way to do it. Right. So uh, step number one, I mean, we already have our Olama running in Docker. So if you want to go back and watch those uh, installation instructions on how to install Docker on your local machine, you can do that. But uh, I, I have it pulled up over here so you can you can take a look uh, how to install Docker on Ubuntu. Uh, it's that straightforward and simple, just executing a couple of commands from getting it, uh, getting your app repo set up and installing uh, by using this particular command over here is gonna all you need and then you have to go through this linux post install steps uh, run this command and uh, and and then just restart your machine is what i would say right log out log back in is what i would say and 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 then you are done right so you ha you'll have docker up and running in your uh, in your machine now once docker is done you can open VS Code and in VS Code, look for um, Okay, uh, I don't want to let me just close that window. Uh, this is one of my uh, previous uh, folders that I had open and uh, it's time to reopen that particular folder which it cannot locate because I have deleted it. So anyway, so if you go to your extensions and if you go and find the dev containers extension, this is something that, that we want over here. We want to install the dev containers extension and uh, go ahead and install it. I have already installed it, so I do not have an option to install, but it's saying uninstall for me. But this is something that you will need over here uh, and once you have dev containers extension installed uh, i have created a template over here um, and and I've, i found out uh, so, some of these uh, details I, I think i barely made any changes to uh, to this particular template that i found but uh, what is in this template is i'm gonna just uh, i have made a zip of this particular folder over here for me um, and I, I just keep it aside and I open this template whenever I want to make uh, changes to it so now that I have unzipped it it came out as this and I'm gonna call it my uh, first AI project right something like this and you can open this and you see that there is only one file over here right so let's open it in terminal and let's do ls minus la there is a hidden folder in here dot dev container okay and let's do a cd uh dev container and do a ls la and you will see there are four files in here right so there are the four files that are required to run this whole environment uh which is a dev container or containerized python uh, environment for you so what are these four uh, four files so let's open this 
uh, let's open the, the root folder which is the first AI project right so this particular folder let's open this in VS code and and see what happens right so code dot and that will open this current folder in VS code right and and let me close this over here and so so we, we open this uh, folder in VS code now you will see that you have dev container dot JSON this is the main file that that will do all the things for you right so this is where the dev containers execution starts within the dot dev container folder and dev container dot json file right and this file is referencing your docker file which is at the same level over here so let's take a look at this docker file so this docker file you are defining which particular image for of python you want to use and it is also defining certain uh, requirements for txt and set python environment.sh uh, um, shell script that is going to be copied and run right so let, let's take a look at what those things are so any dependencies that you have for your project right so uh, let's say in, in this particular one these four dependencies have been mentioned uh, and, and you can keep on modifying it if you have open ai over here right uh, you, you can do that um, and if you have any other dependency that you that you want to include in your project you can keep on adding over here and uh, this will then get copied over to your docker container um, and then this is your set python environment.sh file which is what activates your uh, environment once uh, your uh, uh, your terminal is open and, and you will see that in a second right so uh, all you have to do is just uh, take this particular folder right so which was created by unzipping your base template folder and once you unzipped it you went inside that folder and you just opened it in vs code and in vs code all you have to do is in a way forget about everything else just go to requirements.txt file and add in your requirements over here right and, and and that is it and now once you are done with this you have to build your dev container so that is one step that you have to do every time when you make make some changes over here so let's let's uh, build this dev container docker file and how do you do that you click on this particular blue icon open a remote window kind of icon and then you do um reopen in container i think it was rebuild or reopen uh, probably it is this one reopen in container and and let me do that so it is uh reopening in container i believe once uh you already have a dev com container built it it just uh, reopens in that particular existing container but for you it may say rebuilding the container or something like that but it is it is right now by, by clicking on that button over there and reopen in container kind of uh, option over there it is building that dev container and installing the dependencies see right now it is running that requirements.txt file and it is installing all those dependencies in our docker container and uh, it is getting the environment set up and ready for us and this is pretty cool because when your agents are going to make modifications now they will make modifications into our docker image and not in not to your your host machine now right so this is what we want we do not want these agents to have unrestricted access to um to your host machine all right so you see how uh, your environment is now ready and let's let's do one thing okay it, it is still working it is still working it looks like um let's give it a few more seconds and i believe once it's all done and ready it will give you a terminal over here i believe so that it, it, it opens a terminal or let's see let's see or oh, probably this is this is just the just the log over here for us um let's add um let's see if i can type in here nope so this is just probably the log for that one and let's open a new new terminal over here 
All right, and let's run this particular uh, command now, right? So if this particular pandas uh, library was loaded, it was found because we mentioned it in our requirements.txt, right? So we mentioned this particular uh, requirement over here. So if it was found, it won't throw an error over here. So let's do, um, let's just do first Python minus version and see uh two minuses over here and it says 3119 and this is what we specified in our docker file that we want a 311 uh i think we do not want to install the docker extension inside the dev container so i'm going to close this so we have the right python version over here and then if we run uh python and test.py and you will see that it runs it executes and it just says hello world because we don't care about this we want to make sure that our imports are working over here right so this import worked, meaning that this this was found okay so uh what else can you see over here so you saw that you have this workspaces first ai project in there and if you do ls minus la you will see that you have this uh th this whole folder structure in available over here in the docker container itself and this is pretty cool because now you can make modifications right so if you do cat test.py and you can see your your particular docker file if you make changes to this let's say you do hello world one two three and you save it and if you do a cat over here you can see hello world one two three so so this file is now available in your docker container okay um what that means is uh, you can make changes to your local file over here so you can keep on making changes over here and when you run and execute your code right so when you when you go in and when you execute your code uh, when you run this code it is running in the docker container and and all the dependencies are getting resolved over there too so what else that tells you that now you do not have to do environment management. You do not have to use Conda create environment for your local machine, but you can have these dockerized containers maintaining that whole environment in them. And, and you do not have to maintain those environments anymore. And this is, this is also very nice for us. So I absolutely uh, like the idea of these AI agents not being able to access my machine because as much as I love AI, I don't trust it as much. Uh, those models do hallucinate sometimes and they do um, they do do stuff uh, that are beyond our control sometimes. And, and if they have uh ability to execute code on my machine then i would like to containerize it as much as i can hopefully you found this video helpful uh please let me know if you have any questions or comments on this and i'd be glad to help answer it thank you